think it's uh, um, time to, to start. Uh, um, so now we have the fourth class by uh, Roberto Contino. Um, uh, please go ahead and uh, yeah, feel free to uh, write questions in the, in the chat and then we'll have some discussion after the class. Okay, thanks Stefania. I hope you can hear well. Yeah. Okay, very good. So let's start. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, before resuming the discussion that we were doing, uh, the one on matching, I want to rectify uh, a slightly incorrect statement which I made yesterday. So there was a question about the importance of uh, wave function uh, correction. So in the effective theory, we were writing the Lagrangian without the wave function, okay? So that's actually justified uh, only if you're interested in the value of the coefficient C, but if you want to uh, extract the, the value of the coupling lambda, then this wave function does play a role, okay? So let me quickly explain, okay? So let's put it uh, let's put a Z of phi, which is, uh, in fact, we can also put a tilde just to show that this is a, a quantity in the effective field theory, which allows us to, to match the two-point function. Okay. Then there will be a mass. And here, for convenience, I can also put here a Z phi. And if you want, we can, you can also put a, a, a Z for the mass but we haven't uh, computed the two-point function, so these, these quantities uh, eventually will not be, are not, are not being computed in, uh, uh, in the last days, okay? And then there is a term for the quartic interaction, and here too, uh, you can put a z phi now squared, a z, z lambda, okay, plus our coefficient. Okay, which um, again can be defined with a z phi square in front. Sorry, phi d mu phi square. Now uh, we are going to, to see uh, in a second that eventually this uh, coefficient c can be conveniently redefined and um, there will be a z also for, uh, for c. But the point is the following, that if you want to, uh, so that, then I, let, let me write the expressions that I, I got at the end. In our calculation, we were obtaining these expressions. We're obtaining C equal to minus five, five thirds Y with 16 pi squared one over m psi squared and lambda tilde was equal to lambda plus three over two pi squared log of mu square over m psi squared. In fact, this is a lambda tilde of mu. Okay, and this is also, of course, uh, a function of mu, okay. Now, I was, I was neglecting this Z, okay? But now uh, it's clear that if you want to match the two-point function uh, in the effective field theory, the, the, the expression that you have in the in UV theory, in the UV theory, you have a contribution at one loop from uh, the, the propagation of, of Psi, okay? And this two-point function will give you, and this has to be matched, Okay, in the in the effective theory, just with the the, the free um, two point function. Okay, so in order to to get this uh, this effect from from psi, you can insert this uh, z tilde. Okay, and this will give you a z tilde, which has a form of this uh, an expression of the, of this kind. So there will be one plus some coefficient. Let me call it a divided by sixteen pi square y square. And then there will be uh, a log, okay? A log of uh, m psi 
over, over mu because there will be uh, logarithmic divergence. Then there will be some other finite term. Okay, so this is what you, you get. Now, if you do the matching in presence of this Z tilde, then, then exactly what, what you're matching is not C, but it's, it's a Z square. And also here, there is a Z square C, Z square lambda tilde. Okay, so the formulas that we obtain are correct in this new basis if you also insert this, this Z. So if you want to obtain the lambda tilde in the basis in which the kinetic term is normalized to canonically to, to one, then clearly you need to calculate this Z tilde, okay? And at this point, uh, bring, if you want, uh, this factor Z, okay, on the other side. And, um, and this will give you another correction of order, you see, lambda times Y squared, okay? So the calculation that we did is, uh, is, is meaningful, is correct. Uh, in a basis in which you have this factor in the kinetic term. If you want to get rid of it, then you have to compute the two-point function, match it, and then at this point, uh, you will get the coupling uh, in, the new, in, the, in the canonically normalized basis. For C, instead, there is no need because, you see, the, the effect coming from Z, Z tilde, is a uh, higher order, okay? So already the leading term here is over the Y to the fourth, so that can be neglected. While here there is a term which is uh, of order lambda in this equation. So you need to keep the wave function uh, correction in this equation, but not, it's not necessary for this equation, okay? Okay, so this was one uh, comment I, I wanted to make. Then, okay, uh, somebody made me notice that uh, in our, um, in fact, Giuliano made me notice that uh, if you want to uh, simplify the basis of operators in this theory, then all the operators which have four fields and two derivatives can be brought to the form phi d mu phi squared without the use of equation, without using the equations of motion, okay? Simply by, by integrating by parts. So any operator of this kind can be brought, okay? In this way with uh, um, integration, by parts, okay? You don't need to use the equation. You can, but you don't need. Uh, on the other hand, something which I didn't mention is that th there is a possibility of having operators with two fields and four derivatives, okay? Like for example, box phi <coughs> squared. So th these operators can be brought to this form, but now with with the, with, by using the equations of motion. Okay, here you, you need. If you want to prove that these are not linear independent with respect to this, and, uh, and, and also with respect to this, <clears throat> then you need to use equations of motion. Okay, so this was another observation I wanted to make. Any question about the wave function? Okay. Good, so let's continue. Mm. Let me change board. Actually, there is a question in the chat uh, that says, uh, are all Z's in the Lagrangian tilted Z's? Sorry, sorry, Just, say it again because I didn't hear. Um, I, I'm reading the question. Are all Z's in the Lagrangian uh, tilde Z's? Is in it? this Lagrangian, yes. So let me, let me move, it, move it up. Um, in fact, we, we, are, we are using the effective field theory Lagrangian at three levels so far. So these Z's will be all finite, okay? So are just uh, finite uh, renormalizations or if you want uh, factors, okay? So finite factors, which I, I, I can, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Over there, yes, they're all tildes, they're all the same, sorry. I forgot to put tildes, yes, yeah. It's uh, just a, a typo. Okay, and uh, of course, if you use this Lagrangian at one loop, which is what we're going to do now, then at this point, uh, these, uh, these uh, Z tildes will also uh, in general in include a, a divergent part, which you can use to uh, cancel uh, divergences in the effective field theory, okay? So we, we, were, we were sketching, uh, uh, matching a two loop, A 
matching uh, two loops, okay? So in the full theory, in a very schematic way, yeah? so in the full theory, we need to compute this additional diagram, okay? Well, let me, let me write the one loop diagram as well, okay? Ah, by the way, something that I didn't, maybe I didn't explicitly mention, I'm matching one PI green functions, okay? So all the external legs have to be unpredated. Okay. So I have this. Of course, I have uh, also the, the tree level if you want. Okay. Plus this, plus cross. And then there will be a two loop. There will be this diagram here where these are fermions in the first loop but in the second loop, you have scalars. And again, you need to amputate. So here there is a factor lambda, and, and, uh, and here there are four Yukawa, Yukawa vertices. So the expression for A full, it will be, well, orders uh, P to the zero, which I'm, I'm not interested in in, in this moment. Okay, plus uh, pi square in, in, a, in a Taylor expansion in, in the momentum, in the external momentum, I have pi square over 16 pi square. This is just a schematic, eh? y to the fourth, one plus, so the first term is the, the, the contribution that we computed coming from the, the one loop diagram. And then there will be a second diagram, the, the second contribution at two loops, which case like uh, uh, it's finite, as we say, it, if you, you can check it. And um, in this case, like uh, lambda coming from this, uh, this vertex, again, 16 pi square, there will be some coefficient, which I don't need to, to compute. And then there will be a log of m psi divided by m phi plus, plus a finite term. Okay, can I plus. A, a short question, maybe? Yes, uh, please. Uh, I just uh, adapt about these uh, loop diagrams. Uh, the other way of uh, making the Fermi loops, so the other, the, the changing the arrows, uh, did we count it in the multiplicity last uh, lecture or, ah, oh, okay. Well, here it's in the cross diagrams, but yes, in the, in the one loop calculation that we did, they should be included. Because they, remember, I say that, that there are six contractions. Okay, okay. So, so hopefully the, the, different routings uh, are included, okay? okay? If they are not, then it's a mistake, but they, they should be. <laughs> no, okay. no, okay, thank you. And here, of course, there is a plethora of diagrams. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just uh, sketching, okay, the form of the result. So yes, I expect this, uh, this kind of, uh, of answer, okay? There will be the one loop contribution plus a two loop which scales in this way. It's a finite uh, contribution and, it, and it's suppressed by lambda over 16 pi square and then it, it, it bears uh, a log of m psi over m phi. Okay, now in the effective field theory, what do you have? Well, you, you have to include, you have to uh, add to the three level contribution also the one loop diagram, okay? in which here again, you have lambda, and here you have the fatty vertex with the coefficient c. Now, however, this diagram is, uh, is log divergent. At least uh, the, 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 the part which uh, is proportional to p square. So if you, uh, if you let the p square act on the, the derivatives, act on the external uh, legs, then it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a log divergent diagram. And then you need to, to kill the divergences in the effective field theory. So how do you do? Well, okay, obviously you need to, uh, there are, in fact, th there are two kinds of divergences, okay? So the divergence that you get when the, the derivatives act on the internal lines, okay? But then the degree of divergence is quadratic. So in order to lower it to, to logarithmic, which is the only uh, singularity that you can see in the mesh regularization, you need to pull out two powers of the mass, okay? The, the internal mass. And, and then you will have a divergence which goes like P to the zero. 
So this divergence is canceled by a counting term okay, in the quartic coupling. And then there will be a divergence, divergence which instead goes like P square. And for, in order to cancel that, then you need to uh, insert a counter term which, has, uh, which goes like P square. So in other words, your coefficient C will be redefined as some C of mu, which in fact I can de define conveniently to be I-dimensional, okay? So sorry, dimensionless. So let me put it, uh, a mu to the minus two in front. But since we are in dimensional organization, I will put minus two plus epsilon, okay? Where, where let me write it here. So the number of dimensions is, is four minus epsilon, okay? And then uh, I, I should also introduce a Z, always tilde of C, okay? This is completely analog to the definition in the mesh regularization of your running coupling lambda of mu, which uh, multiplies a mu to the epsilon, z tilde, because we are in, uh, in the effective theory, uh, uh, z, z tilde of lambda, which is the same z tilde of lambda appearing there. Okay, that's why, and this is also tilde. Okay, so the lambda tilde which appears there, it's a, it's a lambda tilde of mu. So once you do this redefinition, then you expect for the effective field theory result, something, okay, again, a toward the P square, which goes like I P square, C of mu, mu to the minus two plus epsilon Z. If you want, you can also put Z phi, Z lambda, uh, this is squared. And then there will be one plus some coefficient, which I can call gamma, now you'll see why, okay? Let me call it gamma zero C, divided by 16 pi square, times one over epsilon, it will be a divergent term. Actually, sorry, let me do it, uh, I need more, sp more, more space, okay? So let me say times, okay, times, um, there will be one plus uh, lambda of mu, mu to the epsilon over 16 pi squared. Okay, so I'm reconstructing the form of this uh, times this coefficient, which I can call gamma zero C for convenience. And you'll see later why I'm using this notation. And, uh, and then there is one over epsilon plus actually minus gamma E plus log of, of four pi. And then there will be minus log of M phi. Okay, so this is more or less the form that I expect. Plus, of course, plus terms of order P to the fourth. I don't know whether you can see here. Plus, let me write it here. Plus order P to the fourth. Okay, so at this point, I need to cancel this divergence. How can I do? Well, I use my, uh, sorry, this was ZC, okay, ZC. In fact, here there is also Z lambda. Right? There is a proliferation of, 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 of the Zs, okay? So these actually I can drop because it, it, it's higher order, okay? So these uh, is really of order, uh, it's one plus orders, uh, uh, lambda, so I, I can, um, at, at this level, I don't need it, okay? Because this is already a two-loop correction. So this I can drop. This instead, I need to use it to cancel this divergence. There is also this term here. However, this term, uh, I can also use it to cancel the divergence in the two-point function, okay? And you know that in, in phi to the fourth, the, the, the two-point function uh, implies a renormalization of the wave function only at the level of two loops, okay? So this Z, Z of phi is, uh, is, it does not have a, a counting term at one loop, okay? Uh, so I, I don't need to use it. I, 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 there will be no divergent term here, okay? There will be still the usual uh, finite uh, factor that I need to match the two-point functions as, as I showed before. 
So what I need to do is to identify the counting term here as one plus delta delta C. So this is the counting term, okay? And then I can, uh, let me write it in the next blackboard. I can elaborate a little bit more, uh, can rewrite this expression, okay? And then I match. Let me do it here. So I get that e, A, E, F, T has the form, okay? So as the form, P to the zero terms, I, P square, C of mu, mu to the minus two. Now let me also take the limit of epsilon going to zero, okay? Uh, I keep this Z uh, tilde phi squared times, times, open parenthesis, one plus delta C, okay? I'm multiplying by the, the Z tilde plus lambda tilde or 16 pi squared and then gamma, gamma zero C. And then I have one over epsilon minus gamma E plus log of or phi plus log of mu over m phi tilde, okay, plus other finite terms, which I, I don't care. At this point, the counting term, delta c, I choose it uh, in order to cancel in, in uh, minimal subtraction, uh, the minimal subtraction scheme, I, I choose it to cancel exactly this, uh, this factor here, okay? So this would be minus, one over epsilon minus gamma e plus log of four pi times gamma zero c lambda tilde over 16 pi square. Okay, and this expression will be useful later. So let's keep it uh, framed. Okay, so this term goes away. Okay, and I'm left, you see, with an expression which involves uh, loop factor times log of mu over m tilde phi. And this has to be compared instead, yeah, sorry, here, notation sometimes not consistent with this. So it's clear that when I do the matching, okay, when I do the matching, uh, this, this log uh, of m psi over m phi okay, will, will, will transform into a log of mu over m uh, sorry, of, of m, m psi divided by, by mu, okay? So doing the matching, in the matching, I will get that uh, um, C of mu over mu squared. Now this C of mu uh, is defined to be dimensionless while this at dimension minus two. Okay, so this uh, C of mu divided by mu square is what I called previously C, basically, a first order. So this is equal to what? Ah, sorry, times Z phi square. This is equal to what? It's equal to, I mean, very, very qualitatively, Y to the fourth over 16 pi squared um, as before, okay? One plus, there will be some number, which eventually will be this gamma C, but let me, let me call it this way, times log of M Psi over mu. Okay, so this is the form that I, that I expect to find. Okay, to be compared, to be compared, sorry, there is a, there is a missing factor, one over M Psi squared. Okay, and probably um, there is a missing factor also here, size squared. Okay, so when you, when you do the matching, then you get uh, a result like this, okay? The first term is what we derived uh, precisely, and then there is a correction of this kind. So this log, you see, is coming from a difference be between 
log of m psi over m phi divided, so my, sorry, minus a log of, m, uh, of mu over m, m, m phi. So of course, at leading order, no, for what we are in, interested in, this m tilde is equal to m. So in other words, let me write it, let me write it um, here. It's happening what I was saying uh, yesterday. So a log of m psi over m phi in the, in the, in the full theory, which, which appears in the full theory, is split into a log of m psi over mu coming from the matching, okay, plus a log of mu over m phi which is entirely uh, arising from the effective field theory. So if this log is large because the ratio is very large, then splitting it uh, allows me to, to do uh, things in a consistent way because I, can, I, I have to choose mu of order m psi in the matching, okay? And then in the F, EFT, uh, I, will, I will be able to choose mu of order m, m psi Okay, because first I do the matching, okay? And the matching is done uh, by, by choosing the, the subtraction point close to the heavy scale. And this allows me to derive things in a perturbative way, okay? Because perturbation theory now is valid and the logs are small. At this point, I'm left with the result in the effective field theory after doing the matching, which has the following form. Let me write it up here, okay? For example, suppose I want to compute the two to two scattering uh, amplitude on shell, so the physical as matrix element at threshold, okay? Uh, by the way, uh, here I should have said that I'm doing a, a simplification because this calculation, sorry, this I should have said at the beginning. So th this form that I derived uh, is, is, is the one that you get in the limit in which P, so there are three scales, right? So P, M Psi, and M Phi in the full theory. Okay, so in general, the result is complicated. It's not as simple as the one that I was catching. But if you take uh, P, much smaller than m phi, much smaller than m psi, okay? So you go to energies which are close to zero, then basically p you can neglect, and then you're left with m psi and m phi. That's why you get, uh, in the full theory, you get only this log. Otherwise, there will be a complicated function of, of the momentum and the masses, okay? So, sorry, I should have said. And the same, I also did it here in the, in the effective theory. So this was a simplification which uh, uh, I can do because I'm matching green functions uh, off shell uh, and I can, I can match even at, at an unphysical kinematic point, okay? Obviously, P square will have to be at least a threshold. Now, if you, if you want, but, but here I'm, I'm not interested uh, at a physical point. So I, I can match even for, for P square going to zero. Now, however, at this point, once I've, I've done the matching, I can use the effective field theory to do calculations of physical observables. For example, I can, I can, I can choose uh, to go on a threshold, so to, to look at the scattering amplitude uh, at threshold. So this means P squared, so S equal to uh, four M, 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 M squared, T equal to zero, U equal to zero. Okay, so let's choose this kinematic point, and then the on-shell uh, EFT amplitude will look like, well, the result that, I, the result that I've sketched uh, there, okay, where now P square is, uh, is of order M squared, okay? But let me keep it, uh, let me keep it in this way, P square, okay? C mu over mu squared, P phi squared, one plus gamma over 60. Again, it's uh, up to coefficients over coefficients uh, log 
okay, of mu over m phi tilde plus finite terms plus order p to the fourth. Now it's true that I'm not expanding, so this I can, uh, if you want, let, let's, let's write here m phi tilde square. So this is not causing confusion, okay? So if I'm, if I'm choosing this kinematic point, okay, then the amplitude will, uh, will scale like this, okay? Then you see, so the point is the point that, okay, apart from the, the precise, uh, contrib so there are other contributions here which are not proportional to C. So let me denote them in this way. The crucial point is that there is a log of mu over m, m phi tilde. So again, uh, there is an, an issue of whether perturbation theory is working or not, okay? Because I'm expanding in, a, in, in here there is a lambda tilde missing. I'm expanding lambda tilde over 16 pi square, but then these, uh, these, uh, these perturbative uh, expansion parameter always appears with logs. If the log is large, then it can uh, undo the, the smallness of the expansion parameter and then perturbation theory is, uh, is, uh, is breaking down. So I had to make sure that this log if I want to do calculations in perturbation theory, in the fatty field theory, this, this log is small. So this means that I have to choose mu of order m tilde phi in the calculation, okay, in the calculation of physical quantities in DFT. Okay, so in other words, I need to evaluate the, 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 the coefficient, the effective coefficient at a low scale, while I know it from matching at a high scale, should be written somewhere here, okay? So this is done, okay, this, this formula is valid for mu of order and, and psi. So how do I do? Well, Roberto, here- uh, Roberto, there is a question. Please. Um, so it's a question about the matching at two loop. So why do we not include the diagram that's order y to the six? So where you take the box diagram that you drew with a fermion loop and you add a scalar down the middle. Sorry, sorry. Y to the six, you mean uh, a loop of fermions with how many legs? Uh, four or five external legs, but then you add a phi down the middle. Ah, uh, you mean in internal? Yeah. Yeah, there might be, eh? yes, yes. I, I was not very detailed in finding all the diagrams, okay? I just picked the first one that I, came to my mind. So you're saying I can, I can get other topologies by having things like these, and now I should, uh, maybe I can do this, right? This is a phi. Yeah, something like that. Yes. This is a good point. Yes, yes. There are the diagrams. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was, I say again, I was not, uh, I was not very detailed here. So I agree. There will be other diagrams. But the form of the, 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 the result, which is the thing I'm, I'm interested in, will be, will be like this. Okay. Yeah. So as an exercise, if you want, <laughs> try to get, uh, try to, to find out all the diagrams. Now, I'm not giving you as an exercise to derive the matching at two loop because it's uh, certainly something non-trivial, okay? So it's, it's a non-trivial calculation and uh, so I, I'm, I'm not, I don't even know whether I'm able to do it, but uh, <laughs> I can only do one, one loop calculations. But the form of the result, I can guess it, okay? So thanks for, for asking. Any other question? Okay, so the task now is to derive this coefficient C uh, at low energy. How do we do? Well, uh, we use the normalization group and effectively the normalization group will resum all the logs of mu, uh, of mu over M phi. Okay, so, and as, as you know, uh, you start from this equation by noticing that the left hand side is, uh, is not depending on mu. Okay, and then you derive an equation for, for C, for C of mu. So in other words, let's derive uh, the left-hand side, the right-hand side 
with respect to log on mu. Okay, so I get zero equal to the log of mu um, C of mu times mu to the minus two plus epsilon ZC plus minus two plus epsilon C of mu ZC plus C mu, sorry, mu to the minus two plus epsilon plus C Z, let, let me write it here, plus C mu, mu to the minus two plus epsilon. And then there is a, there is a D, D log of mu ZC, okay? So which means that uh, after taking epsilon going to zero, I get that the derivative, let me write it this way, okay? Mu d mu of c mu is equal to two, okay? This term, this I can neglect, plus actually minus one over z c mu d mu z c all times c mu, which I can define to be two plus gamma c, which is a function of lambda, lambda tilde. And these are all tildes, eh? so sorry. I mean, the tildes, uh, you will take care of yourself. Time C, C mu. So this is the, the normalization group equation for, for, for our coefficient C, which now we have to, to solve, okay? But solving it is, is, a, is simple. Simple by separation of variables, okay? And this will give me, will give me log of C mu over C of M, where M is some reference mass, reference scale, equal to the, the integral or D log um, of mu prime log of m, log of mu, of two plus gamma c of lambda mu prime, which means that c mu, so the two I can, uh, I can solve, okay? I get a log of, uh, uh, log of mu squared divided by, by m squared, okay? Then I, I exponentiate. Okay, and then I get C of M times this factor, mu square over M square, times the exponential of, and then here I can change, I can change uh, the, the variable, okay, using the fact that, uh, let me write it here, mu d mu of lambda is defined to be beta of lambda. Okay, the beta function. So I can change uh, integration from d log of, of, uh, of mu to d lambda. So I get d lambda, let me call it lambda prime, from lambda m lambda mu of what? Of gamma c of lambda prime over beta of lambda prime. Okay, so this is the solution. Of course here, uh, the theory is non-perturbative, and then you don't know how to, to, to solve the integral. But fortunately, the theory is perturbative. So we can write the first order this ratio and solve. Let me do it. Let me do it here. Okay, so you know the solution for your beta function, but the beta function, let, let me write it, write it here. Okay, so the beta function is, uh, is over the lambda square. So it will go like lambda square over 16 pi square times a coefficient, which I call beta zero plus orders, higher orders, lambda cube. And then gamma, gamma C 
of lambda instead will be of order lambda. So it will be lambda over 16 pi squared times a coefficient, which I can conveniently call gamma zero of C plus order lambda squared, okay? And now you see that this coefficient is exactly the one which appears over there, because look at this formula. So this formula allows you to compute to, to compute the, the to compute the, 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 the first term in the expansion of the of what eventually is called the, the anomalous dimension. Okay, so gamma c. Why? Because gamma c is defined in this way. Okay, so Gamma C, gamma C is defined as minus one over Z C. And then I had to take the derivative with respect to log, okay, of uh, Z tilde. Okay. Now Z tilde is what? It's, a, it's one plus delta C. So I get delta C. Okay. But this is what? This is, well, it's approximately equal. So this one over Z tilde, I can forget. Okay, this is minus. Okay? I get minus, and let me, let me drop these terms here because the important thing is the, is the singular piece. One, minus one over epsilon. So this is uh, together with this minus becomes one over epsilon times the derivative times uh, gamma, gamma Z, the coefficient which I, uh, conveniently called gamma zero C, okay, because you'll see how it will match, divided by 16 pi square times the log of mu lambda of mu. Okay, now here I had to pick the term in the derivative of lambda tilde, okay, which goes uh, like epsilon to the zero. This is the, the the, the limit in which epsilon is equal to zero. But if I, if I keep the term which goes to zero with epsilon, uh, I can do it using this formula. Because you see that if I derive with respect to both the left and, and the right hand side, I get zero equal to the, the log of mu lambda tilde of mu times mu to the epsilon. And these it's of higher order, okay? So I can neglect plus epsilon uh, mu to the epsilon, lambda tilde mu plus order lambda square. Okay. So this means that this equation actually has to be, uh, has to be updated if you want to include this term. This is, this is uh, minus, I think there are too many minuses probably. Well, let's see. Minus epsilon of lambda tilde plus what I define to be the beta function. There are probably too many minuses. Um, was a minus here? But anyway, so this term here becomes minus gamma, gamma, uh, sorry, minus uh, epsilon times lambda. Okay, so epsilon, epsilon cancel out. Okay, and the other terms uh, are high order, so I can neglect. Okay, and uh, and then I, I get uh, I get exactly this equation with gamma zero. Apart from this minus, which uh, in this moment I I don't see how it can be present. I must have done some. Uh, Maybe the definition there was not correct. I should have put a minus gamma, gamma zero C. I'm afraid that in order to, to match it correctly, I have to put a minus there. Because eventually uh, I get this formula, which I want to use it as a definition, okay, if you want. Anyway, this is just to show that this coefficient can be computed by the, the counting term DC over there. Notice that in principle, uh, there, you might be worried about the fact that I'm, I'm neglecting the, the wave function normalization. But again, as I told you, uh, the Z tilde phi over there, uh, which also could provide a counting term, uh, pro provide a term uh, which is divergent, 
actually it is not divergent, does not contain any one over epsilon p's because uh, in, the effect, in the, the effective field theory, the wave function normalization of, appears at two loop orders. So fortunately, because of this, this, uh, this feature, we can compute with only the four point function, the coefficient gamma C zero. Okay, so the exercise that I, I can leave you is to compute this, uh, this coefficient by, by making the calculation of the four point function uh, in a detailed way. Basically you need to, so let me write it, exercise, exercise, compute gamma uh, zero C uh, by evaluating the diagram with one effective vertex, okay? And uh, at one loop. Very good. So at this point, I can use these formulas, okay, in the in the in the exponent here, okay, and I get that c mu is approximately equal to c of m mu square over m square, and then there is the exponent, okay, of the integral of the over d lambda prime of gamma zero c over beta zero, one over lambda tilde plus smaller terms. Okay, and, and these eventually, let me write the final formula. I uh, can write it here. Okay. Brings me to the final, the final result, which is C of M C of M mu to the mu to over M to the square times lambda of mu lambda tilde of M to the gamma zero C over beta zero. Okay, so this is the, the, the solution of the RG equation. And what does it tell you? It, tell, it tells you that apart from this uh, effect coming from, uh, from the one loop diagram, okay, C scales with uh, its classical dimensionality, okay? So basically, if you define a C uh, with dimension minus two, this quantity doesn't run, okay? So it's just because I've defined C to be dimensionless, C of mu to be dimensionless, that basically I have this scaling. Okay, so this is the classical part. But then there is a, non, non, uh, a, a quantum effect which is uh, captured by the ratio of couplings to this power. Okay, let me do one more step and then maybe I will ask for questions. Okay, so this formula I, I want to show that captures all resumes, all the logs of mu over m phi. How can I show this? It's simple because at this point, let me use the, the, the solution of the, the RG equation for the coupling. Okay, so this, the solution is a lambda mu is equal lambda of m one minus beta zero over 16 pi squared lambda of m log of mu over m, okay? So lambda of mu over lambda of m to the gamma zero, sorry, to the gamma zero C over beta zero is equal to, well, uh, you, you had to uh, raise to this power, okay? Invert, and then what you get? You get one plus, Okay, gamma zero instead of beta zero because of this, divided by 16 pi square, lambda of m log of mu over m, okay, plus orders, terms of order lambda, all these lambdas are tilde, eh? lambda tilde log of mu over m squared, right? So there is an entire series of terms which, which scale like lambda of, of m, okay, times log of mu over m. So all these terms are resumed, you see, are resumed through the RG equation, okay? And, they, and, 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 then, and then these, uh, 
the solution here is valid not not up to uh, uh, terms of order lambda log to the n okay but but this result is valid valid up to terms of order lambda squared times log okay so all these terms lambda times log to the n are resum these are the leading logs and these RG uh, resummation improves the, the, the convergence of perturbation theory because it resumes an entire series of terms which might be potentially large, okay, and gives you a smaller, a smaller error because now it's lambda square which appears multiplied by log. So this is called uh, RG improvement, okay. And, and finally, okay, the comment is that by this formula, I can, I can compute C mu at low energy, okay, uh, and use it in my prediction for the for the effective field theory. So that's the plan, okay? You match at high scale, the use the randomization group to run down to the low scale, where you do the experiment and you evaluate matrix elements either with perturb perturbation theory or even with a non-perturbative tool, which might be lattice or whatever, okay? And all the leading logs are captured by a resum by the RG equation. Questions? At this point, I think it's a good, good moment to stop and, uh, and see whether there are questions. Uh, yes, I just lost this last part about the resumation. Uh, why we go from uh, the order of logarithm square to logarithm of lambda square times, uh, sorry, order of lambda square times logarithm of uh, mu. Yes, because you see, what is the error here? The error is, is coming from the fact that in this exponent, I am, I'm expanding, uh, and here there is one plus orders of lambda, right? So I'm, I'm neglecting terms which are of higher order in lambda, okay? So the point is that, uh, if you included at one loop, you included terms which are uh, of, of order lambda tilde log, okay? The next terms that you are neglecting are of order lambda tilde square log, okay? If you, if you, if you plug these uh, additional terms here, you will find lambda tilde square log terms, okay? But then th this formula captures a, a series of, 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 of lambda times log uh, to the any power. And this you can see it from here, no? Because uh, the, the, this formula is exactly the resumation of these terms. Even the RG equation for, for lambda is a, is a way to resume these logs, okay? If, even this equation no, alone for lambda, apart from uh, its, uh, no, its ratio to this power. So alone, this formula resumes all the terms lambda times log. So the RG, the RG solution, even for the, the coupling, not, not only for, for C of mu, but even for the coupling, you're examining all the leading logs, okay? How do these leading logs arise? They, they arise, lambda times log arise at one loop. Lambda square log square arises at two loops. Lambda cube uh, log cube arises at, at, at three loops and so on. So there is a, an entire series of terms uh, each arising at a higher loop level, which you can resume efficiently by the RG. You, you don't need to compute two loops, three loops, etc. You know that these three loops and uh, two loops and three loops, etc., will contain these terms because these leading logs are, are those needed to fulfill the, the, the RG running, the RG evolution. Okay, so this class of that class of contributions you can resume. Okay, here it's, it's the solution for the coupling, but then uh, once you reconstruct this quantity, uh, you can also resume these terms in the expression for C. Okay. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Okay. Let's, let's move on. And um, at this point, I want, to, uh, I want to mention very quickly 
the fact that uh, uh, what happens in a, in, a, in a real effective field theory, because here we, we derive the, the, the normalization group equation for C. I don't see it anymore. It was somewhere. Um, but anyway, it was somewhere, okay. <laughs> but uh, but uh, in practice, if you have more than one operator, as it happens all the times, uh, operators will mix. So it's not true that, that uh, uh, a loop insertion of one operator is canceled by a counting term which has the same form. So operators can mix. For example, uh, and, and how do they mix? Okay, at the one insertion level, What does it mean one insertion level? That I consider one loop diagrams with only one insertion of an effective operator. Okay, you might insert more, but let me focus now in this moment on diagrams with one insertion. Okay, then uh, what I'm going to show uh, with, a, with a very intuitive uh, argument is that uh, uh, an op operators with dimension D mix with operators of dimension uh, less or equal than D, and of course, and same quantum numbers. Okay, so this is a result that you you can uh, easily understand in terms of, uh, of um, uh, dimensional analysis, basically. Okay, and uh, let's, let's try to understand how, why, why this is true. Let, let's consider our theory, okay? Our theory, so notice that here, I'm not saying effective operators necessarily, okay? But, but any operator, okay? Even the normalizable ones, okay? So in our case, we start with a dimension six operator, for example, phi, d mu phi squared, okay? We just uh, saw that, that uh, uh, it, it, it gets renormalized by itself, okay? And the, and the RG equation was written in this way. Let me rewrite it just to have it here. C mu equal to two plus gamma C function of lambda times C. Okay, so this was the the their G equation where C here and C here are the same ones. However, okay, uh, this operator, in fact, according to this rule, will mix also with phi to the six, okay? Will mix with, with, uh, with, uh, with phi to the fourth, uh, with, with, uh, with a kinetic term, because these are all operators with, which are even under the, the parity symmetry, okay? It cannot mix with, with operators which are odd because they have different quantum numbers, but it can mix with all these operators because they have the same quantum numbers and dimensionality uh, six or, 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 or lower. So how can I see this? Well, I, I can do a loop diagram. Now I'm in the effective field theory, yeah? So forget about the full theory. So everything here, everything here is effective. Okay, I can do a loop diagram in which I have six external legs. So everything here is phi, okay? All the legs are, are phi. So this diagram has one, two, three propagators, okay? But there are two derivatives here. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm aiming at, uh, at lo logarithmic divergences because those in dimensional regularization are the ones that give me an RG evolution. Now, if the, if the momentum P, okay, X, uh, the, the derivatives X on the internal lines, then I get, uh, uh, I get a, a logarithmic divergence because I have uh, two momenta in, internal in the numerator, D for, D for P, okay, and then I have three scalar propagators. So this, okay, renormalizes, at this point, this logarithmic divergence uh, uh, 
by, by which counter term is it canceled? Is it canceled by a counter term of order five to the six? Okay, so this goes like uh, C of, uh, of mu, okay, times uh, lambda squared over 16 pi squared log of mu over M, M5, if you want, okay, with all tildes. So I just show you that it can mix with pi to the six, but it can mix also with pi to the fourth. How can it, can it you, you can do it? Well, consider the same diagram as before, okay? But now uh, you need to, to, first of all, you don't want to have derivatives uh, acting on the external lines. So let me uh, put again the derivatives internally, but now the divergence is, uh, is quadratic. So I can lower the degree of divergence by having two mass insertions. Oh, sorry, one mass insertion for a scalar, which lowers the degree of divergence by, by one power, by, by two powers, sorry. So in other words, uh, you see, the point is just the uh, dimensional analysis because this coefficient goes like one over some heavy mass scale, right? Because it has dimension six, okay? So if you, if you, if, if you don't put in the numerator any mass scale, then you will normalize a dimension six operator by, just by dimensional analysis because so this quantity has dimension minus two and it will be the coefficient of another dimension six operator. But if I pull out of the loop two powers of, of the mass, the internal mass, then I, I will lower the dimensionality, right? So I, I can get m phi square at this point, this is dimensionless and I will have lambda over 16 phi square, okay? And then there will be a log of, of mu over phi. So again, this is a renormalization of, uh, of an operator with no derivatives, which however now has four legs, okay? This is five to the fourth and no derivatives, okay? And so on, okay? Try to convince yourself that you can also renormalize these two. So what is the, the, what, what is the uh, renormalization group equation that you can write? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an equation in which here there, appear, there appears the dimensionality, the classical dimensionality of, of, of the couplings, okay? But the coupling here is not the same coupling here necessarily, and this gamma C is a matrix. So in other words, the, the, the equation is this one. Ci of mu okay, is equal to delta ij factor, which is the dimensionality of the operator, or i minus four, which in our case was two. But now the dimensionality of the operator might be different from six, might be lower. Plus an anomalous dimension matrix, which is a function of, of lambda in dimensional regularization, times cj of mu. So this is the new normalization group equation. And you see that this is describing what is go goes under the name of operator mixing. Okay. So this is what I wanted to say for, uh, for the case in which you insert the operators only once. Okay, you can only go down in, uh, in dimensionality. But there is also the possibility, and by the way, this going down requires having uh, masses here in the, so having uh, so-called relevant term in your Lagrangian. Relevant means that it has dimension, uh, positive dimensionality, okay, like a mass term. For example, in the Cara Lagrangian, you don't have masses, okay? So you cannot go uh, down in dimensionality. However, there is also the possibility to insert uh, the, the effective operators more than once. Of course, more insertions will, uh, will be suppressed by more powers of the heavy scale. So th these terms will be, th these insertions will be less and less uh, important. Okay. But, uh, but you can consider the situation. How does it work? Well, okay, let me, let me neglect for simplicity 
the let me neglect for simplicity the fact of masses in the loop. Okay, so and this is in fact the case of oh, again of Carla Lagrangian. So if you neglect uh, the the possibility of going down in dimension, then it <laughs> if you if you do multiple multiple insertions. then it's clear that you will always go up, okay? Because for example, this diagram, uh, if you want to select the, the logarithmic divergence, then both P square has to act outside. So this will go like P to the fourth over M to the fourth, no? times if you want C mu squared, and then there will be a log. But, but this, at this point, is a dimension, dimension eight operator. Okay, is the coefficient of a dimension eight operator. This dimension eight operator might be written as a d mu phi to the fourth. Okay, so the, the counter term has this, uh, this form. There are four derivatives to get a p, p to the fourth. If you, so, if you, if you insert it three times, Okay. Then clearly you go to a dimension 10 operator, right? Because you will have C to the cube, which goes like one over M to the, to the sixth. Okay. And this is the, the, the if at this point, uh, uh, if you don't want to use, again, if you don't want to use masses, internal masses is what I'm saying, then the only thing you can, you can put in the, in the numerator, okay, is a, uh, is a powers of momentum, okay? So this will be p to the sixth and so on. So for example, uh, Cara Lagrangian is, an, is a situation of this kind because the only interaction among pions has, uh, has two derivatives, okay? So there are, here there are two derivatives and then there is a, a power one over pi squared. So in all respect is, uh, is like our, our operator phi d mu phi squared, okay? It's exactly the same. So the only way to, in which pions can interact is through insertions, okay? Through uh, vertices with this uh, higher derivative interaction. And then every time insert it uh, uh, one more time, then you go up in dimension. So it means that Diagrams of this kind, you see, you don't have a quoting interaction to put at all because uh, Gaussian bosons all interact derivatively. So if you do this loop, this will be renormalized by a term like this, okay, with four derivatives and so on. Okay. Uh, any question on this? Okay, let me, let me add a comment about uh, the importance of resuming the leading logs. I want to mention one situation. We already did it in words, but I, I want to do it, uh, substantiate it a little bit more with numbers. Uh, what, what is it important to resume the, the leading logs? Well, it's important when you have a, a, a big hierarchy of scales between, uh, you're you matching a some high energy scale and then you, 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 you want to do experiments at much lower scale. If there is a big hierarchy of scale, then the log will become large. And of course, the coefficient, the, the, the coupling constant in front should not be super, super small because otherwise, again, <laughs> the log announcement will not be uh, enough to give you, to give you uh, a big, a big effect, okay? So situation, when, sorry, when resuming leading logs is important. As an example, okay, you can consider uh, B and Kaon physics 
in particular processes which occur through electroweak effects. So for example, BB bar oscillations, KK bar oscillations, and, uh, and weak decays in general. So if you want weak, weak uh, processes. Okay, decays of, uh, and oscillations. That in order to, to, to have this effect, you need to exchange virtually a W boson or a W or a Z boson, okay? Uh, or even the top quark or any heavy state. So this means that the, 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 the leading logs might become important. Now, let's put a few numbers on, on, on the board. So you know that alpha, alpha strong. So, and, and these, these, uh, these uh, corrections, these, these uh, logs will come from, from loop corrections, uh, uh, from loops of gluons. For example, if you want to, if you want to do BB bar oscillation or KK bar oscillation, then you integrate out at three level at W, and this gives you an effective four fermion operator, okay? But then you can correct these, uh, these, uh, these interaction with gluons, okay? Both in the UV but, and, 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 and in the effective field theory, okay? And these gluon uh, loops will give you terms of order alpha strong log of mu over the, the mass that you want to, the, the energy if you want, the energy of your experiment, which eventually will be of order of the mass of the meson. Okay, of order of the mass of the meson. So the question is whether these, uh, these two terms are, are important or not. And eventually, again, this alpha strong might be evaluated at the mass of the meson. Okay, now, uh, alpha strong, if you start with alpha strong at the electroweak scale, this is 1.0.118. Okay, alpha strong at the mass of the B is of order 0.22. And alpha strong at 1 GB, now I'll tell you why I am choosing this, uh, this point, is uh, 0.514, something like this. Okay, and, and in B physics, okay, in B physics, I need to run from MW down to MB. So this ratio scales is of order 15, while in, in chem physics, I need to go to MW to one GV. Now I'll tell you why, why one GV, which is 80, G, 80 factor 80, okay. So now if you, if you evaluate these logs, you see that alpha strong at MB times log of uh, MW, because now you have to set, okay, new over the MW over, over MB, okay. This is of order 0 0.05, 0 0.05, okay while alpha strong at one GB times log of MW over one GB is of order 0.2. So you might say, oh, but look, these are still small numbers. True, but eventually uh, what, what appears uh, in the perturbation expansion is these terms times another one coefficient, which might be this gamma zero or, or something like beta zero. Okay, so in practice, uh, these terms are always slightly larger than what appears here, okay. And now the fact that, that the resolution is important, you can also monitor here, because you see a resolution of leading logs also comes uh, uh, in, 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 in the evolution of the coupling constant. And you see that going from here to here is a factor two, okay. While going to here to here is, a, is an even higher factor. So clearly, if leading log resummation is important in the coupling, it might also be important, and it is important also in the, in the effective coefficients. So the moral is that both in, in B physics and chaos physics is crucial to resum. Also, because it depends on the precision, uh, the theoretical uh, accuracy that you are you're, uh, looking for. Okay? And that has to do, of course, to match the experimental precision. Experimental precision, in these kind of observables, for example, 
difference of masses of B mesons and uh, counts and, uh, and so on. So observables in these, uh, for example, the, the, the real part of uh, the epsilon parameter and KK bar mixing. So these are observables which can have a relative, relative precision of order 1%. Okay, and so it's clear that matching this uh, experimental accuracy needs a very precise theoretical calculation. And resuming the, li the leading logs is important. So why 1GB here? Why don't, don't I set the mass of the, of the kaon, which is uh, 500 dB, a slightly smaller value? Well, because you see that alpha strong is already growing uh, quite uh, uh, quickly. So I, I want to retain, okay, I, I want to retain a certain level of... Uh, of, uh, of perturbativity, otherwise everything blows up, okay? So in other words, I, I need to be able to, to run, okay, in a, in a controlled environment uh, using the renormalization group e equation. So I don't want to go to too low energies. In any case, the adronic matrix elements between, for example, two quarks, two, sorry, two mesons, two heavy mesons for the oscillations or for example, B to, to pi, pi, et cetera. So these will be, these matrix elements, adronic matrix elements will be evaluated uh, on the lattice, okay? Well, for those where we, we can do the calculation, for example, for, for the mixing. So the lattice in any case is an unperturbative tool. So, so, so you can make calculations at one GB or, or any other scale uh, nearby without problems. So you can choose the scale uh, arbitrarily, okay? So convenience is, uh, is, uh, is dictating this choice, okay? One GB is a bit above the mass of the count, so perturbation theory still works, okay? A bit borderline, but still is, uh, is under control, and then you can do, uh, you can resume the leading logs uh, by resolving, by, by, sorry, by, by yeah, resolving the RG group, uh, actually not a, a leading order, but actually next to, next, to, next to leading order, okay? Uh, sorry. I have a question right about this thing. Uh, so this means that uh, the new expansion parameter, which is coupling times the log, when it hits uh, one, we need to stop, right? Yeah, you, you cannot, uh, well, uh, in practice, you need to, to see what the, the next term in your, what, what is the error? So these terms you are resuming, okay? So th th these are fine, so you have to see, the next term in the expansion, which is, uh, which is weighted by another factor alpha. But now if alpha is becoming over the one, then of course <laughs> there's no such, a, such suppression. So here is half, okay, and uh, is a... Uh, no, but the one. next term... Now, to be honest, okay, here you, you should also put a pi, okay, to be, to be precise, because this, the, fa the perturbative factor is alpha strong over pi. Okay, so when alpha strong over pi is over the one, then you lose control. This is what I would say. And uh, what would be the remedy for that? Like, what could we do? No, there is no remedy. <laughs> you have to stop. Uh, th th it would be solving the, the RG evolution uh, non-perturbatively. Okay, but that for, in order to do that, you need to know the, 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 the anomalous dimension uh, in a non-perturbative way, which we cannot do. Yeah, but I was thinking previously we were doing our perturbation only in the coupling constant and we could improve it with summing the leading logs. Like, yes. could there be one more trick to improve one more time to have no. a better uh, it's measure? No, 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 eventually you're, you're uh, I mean, th there is energy improvement, but you're still relying on perturbation theory. If the coupling, coupling strength alpha over pi becomes over the one, there is no way, okay? so. The trick here is to okay. undo the announcement coming from, from the logs. But if the coupling itself is blowing up, then there is no trick. Okay, okay. What, uh, what if we have a small coupling, but really lo uh, large logarithm, such that coupling times logarithm is order one, but we want to improve it. So. Uh, uh, no, exactly. That's exactly the perfect situation in which you, you, you can and you should re resume through the RG, okay? A very huge log, okay? Let's say 100, but this never occurs, okay? And this, let, let's put pi, of order one over 100, okay? Then this term is, these, uh, these terms, the leading logs are over the one and you must resume it. Otherwise you, you, you have an order okay. one error.
okay? And this is done through the RG equation. And then there will be the next terms, no? the next to, to leading logs, which are of order alpha squared over alpha, alpha over pi squared times log, okay? Which will be one over 100. And these are very small. Okay, this already saved us in these situations, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Here you see numerically there is a hierarchy. The log of these numbers is really not 100. Okay, it's a few. <laughs> it's only a few. So you 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 get a, a, an announcement, but uh, but it's not a super huge announcement. The, the trick is that you are running down. Okay, you start from a, a, an energy in which the coupling is small, 0.1, but then you are running down, and this amplifies the effect. Okay. So even a mild announcement from the log somehow gives you uh, an important correction. Again, look at these numbers, no? Going from here to here, it gives you a factor two. Going from here to here, it give, gives a factor which is almost five, okay? So it, it, there is clearly you know, a big, big effect coming from the leading logs, which you must resume, okay? Any other question? So this is all what I wanted to say about uh, uh, effective field theories in which we do, we do know the UV theory. I have a question about operator mixing. Yes. Uh, so uh, we have said that uh, we at one insertion level, for example, we get that um, we need counter terms also from uh, terms of dimension uh, less than the one of the operator we are selecting. Yes. Okay. So just uh, uh, for clarifying, in the renormalization new equation uh, group equation, we just wrote for a pro, uh, in uh, with operator mixing. Yes. When we select an operator, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, a, a coefficient, the terms, the the counter terms uh, in, involved in this uh, renormalization group equation comes from operators of higher dimension? No, no, no. Uh, it's, uh, operator mixing means that the coefficient will be <laughs> those multiplying the operator which mix, okay? So if, if uh, it, it's over there, no? So in this diagram, okay, if I put uh, the, the derivatives acting, uh, if I let the derivatives acting inside, okay, then I need a counting term which is of order, uh, sorry, which is of the form phi to the sixth. Okay, so you, you will have this times Z6 tilde, okay, <laughs> times uh, Z5 uh, third. So the point is that if you don't put this Z tilde, okay, this Z5 alone is not able to kill all the divergences. So you need to have this, okay, and you are allowed to do it because you, you have such possibility. Basically, what you're doing is, uh, is renormalizing the operator, not just the field, but the, the operator. So there is a, an anomalous dimension, sorry, the operator. Yeah, the operator, but, but this means also the coefficient. Okay, so you have a new coupling and the new coupling also comes along with a, with a Z tilde of its own. Okay, so, so here, okay, there will, be, uh, there will be a term in the anomalous dimension matrix, which is, uh, uh, which, which uh, somehow uh, gives a contribution to C, where, where C is our, the C of our operator phi d mu phi squared, okay, coming from C6, right? So there will be, no, the, in our, I told you, so in, in our case, uh, phi d mu phi cube, phi d mu phi squared mixes with phi six, phi four, d mu phi square, phi square, which means that the coefficients which appear here on the right hand side are those of these operators in addition to, to the, original operator itself, okay? So this matrix will be a one, two, three, four, five by five matrix. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Thank you. And then the second question is about multiple insertion. Uh, so uh, why the, uh, in these examples, for example, when we get the dimension eight operator, so why the dimension uh, six does not mix with dimension eight in this example? No, no, it does, it does. Dimension okay. six mixes with dimension eight, right? So I insert the dimension six twice, okay? So C, C, 
Oh, I insert it twice, and I get something which goes like one over m to the fourth. Okay, so uh, if I don't use the internal masses, okay, that will have to be the coefficient of what of a dimension eight operator necessarily by power counting, not by dimension analysis. Okay, but this means that the, the, a dimension six mixes with something of dimension more than six. Yes, but of course it will not be an equation of this kind because this equation is linear. Okay, well, here there is a, just a C. Yeah, exactly. So you see, in the, on the right hand side sign, uh, here uh, there is a C square. Okay, you can write the renormalization group equation, but then it's nonlinear. It will involve uh, C square, C cube, and so on. Okay, and so this is the reason I, I try to avoid mixing with higher dimensional operators? No, no, no. I'm, I mean, uh, you, you cannot avoid it. The point is that uh, uh, these divergences are necessary. So, so killing these divergences is necessary if you want to do a calculation at that order, no? because you want to consider this kind of diagram. This kind of diagram will have a, a divergent term, no? one over epsilon, plus finite terms. Okay, now the question is, these can be canceled by a counting term which comes from uh, C8 times D5 to the fourth, okay? So I can, uh, I can uh, add here a counting term coming from C8, okay? And, and cancel this divergence. But then I'm left with this finite term. Now, the question is, this finite term, do I care? Because it's of order P to the fourth divided by heavy scale to the fourth. So if this is super small, okay, then I don't care. So I know that I can renormalize it, but in practice, I don't compute it. You see, there is an, an infinite tower of, of counting terms which I had to introduce. No? Each one uh, has a coefficient, involves a coefficient times an operator of increasing dimensionality. That's why the theory is non-normalizable because every time I make a loop with more insertions, then I go to a next level of, of dimensionality and there is no end, okay? It's an infinite series, series. However, the point is that if you want to do predictions at a finite order in P, in P squared, then simply you don't care about these, uh, these uh, terms P to the fourth. So this diagram exists, but you don't compute it. You don't need to compute it. You know that it will be made finite but you don't care because it's contributing to your observable at a subleading order. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, there was something that I came to my mind that I should have told you. Uh, now I forget. <laughs> um, let's see what it was that I forgot to tell you before. Well, now, okay. Uh, if it comes to my mind, I will tell you. One thing that I didn't, I didn't mention is the following, that I leave as an exercise uh, also the following. I, I say it in words, but uh, let me write it, okay? Another exercise could be, could be one, compute, compute Z tilde phi, at order y square uh, by computing by matching by matching the two point function and uh, and in fact uh, you should compute this okay and also and also uh, m, m tilde okay at order lambda square by matching the two-point function. And then finish, uh, complete, complete the one-loop matching complete the one-loop matching by uh, computing um, but no, sorry, that's it. Okay, so is there anything else that has to be, has to be computed? I don't think so, sorry. There was something else, let me see. Uh, I think it's, uh, 
Ah, no, sorry, exactly. By computing, sorry, eh? by computing C6, okay, by, by matching, okay, and uh, compute the uh, matching the six point function, okay, by uh, well, matching the six point function and, and, and computing C6. That is the exercise that, that is left uh, for you, okay. So these you, you find in any textbook, <laughs> okay, so that, that's simple. But, uh, but this one is uh, slightly less simple, but it's, uh, you repeat the steps that we did. Okay, so if you want to do a, a complete uh, one-loop matching, you need to compute everything. Ah, now I remember the thing which I, I wanted to, to, to tell you. There is, a, there is a, a, a complication, okay, when you do uh, matching, when you do, sorry, the RG evolution of, of operators, because uh, this you can uh, you can check yourself, but uh, unfortunately uh, we have we have simplified the basis of operators uh, to get to reduce to phi d mu phi squared and phi to the six. This was the basis now the minimal set of uh, of uh, dimension six operators. We have removed uh, a long list of redundant redundant operators. Now unfortunately, when you do the RG evolution these operators can pop out again. So in other words, your original operator, which is a, a minimal one, can mix also with redundant ones. Okay, so unfortunately, these anomalous dimension matrix will not be uh, five by five, but it would be five by a larger number. So the, the practical way to do things is to uh, unless you want to enforce minimality at, at each step, uh, at each e-fold in, in the RG evolution, which is which I think might be done, but it's uh, I think it's more complicated. You you relax your constraints. You allow any operator, okay? But the matrix at this point would become the normal dimension matrix will be larger. You you evolve, and then at the end you simplify by killing all the operators which are not uh, not mm, important. Okay, so by, by reducing to the minimal ones, the, the redundant ones, you, you kill them at the end instead of killing at the beginning. You also can kill, it, kill them at the beginning, but then they will be regenerated through the running. Okay, so that's a complication, uh, but people know and uh, professionals do, uh, do know how to handle these things, okay? By brute force, basically, <laughs> you have to compute a larger uh, anomalous dimension matrix. Okay, I'm, I'm afraid that time is, uh, is over. So if you want, uh, you can ask more questions uh, about this, but there is no time to go to the next uh, topic, which uh, will be, I uh, will cover it tomorrow. It will be uh, the discussion of, uh, of effective field theories uh, when you don't know, in, in cases in which you don't know the UV. Okay, and then we will discuss I, I'm, I'm not sure how much time it will be left for the discussion about the standard model effective field theory. So there was a lot of material which I prepared, but, uh, but I, I was uh, going slowly and uh, maybe I will tell you a few things at the end and some references, okay. We'll see tomorrow, but I want to certainly, I, I need to cover the case in which the, the UV theory is not known. So I need to, which is exactly what happens for the standard model effective field theory, by the way. So maybe if you have other questions here, uh, otherwise I'm, I'm done.